Man, I ain't got time for this crap. I gotta shoot this video. Can go outside and play? No, I gotta shoot this review. Now leave me alone. Ugh. Today, I'm gonna be talking about. I shine. Man, I ain't got time for this crap. I gotta shoot this video. Can go outside and play? No, I gotta shoot this review. Now leave me alone. Today, I'm going to be talking about, what the hell? Fred, the late Dr. Seuss. y'all today we're gonna be talking a nightmare on elm street for the dream master and i'm being joined once again by my man darnell from rejected heroes media we already reviewed dream warriors and he's here once again so uh, yeah check out the link in the description i'm gonna leave the link to his channel also to our dream warriors review so let's get into this y'all a nightmare on elm street for the dream master unfortunately i did not get to see this in the theater i think this dropped when i was in probably the fourth grade so i didn't get to see it in theaters and I didn't get to rent it at the video store because back then at the little mom and pop video stores, this is pre-blockbuster days, it was hard to get a hot new release and that was a hard one to get. But fortunately, I had another movie nerd in my class named Gary who had a copy of it. He had a dub copy of it and I said, Gary, you got to let me hold this tape, brother. And Gary, he obliged and gave me the tape. Took me about maybe two months to get it back to him, but you know what? He was a real friend. He let me hold the tape. So when he gave me that VHS copy, I must have watched that at least, oof, at least a few times a week. All right, I watched that on repeat. Okay, so as a kid, absolutely adored it, loved it. All right, and the fact that it wasn't scary by this time, Freddy was no longer scary. This is where we get to the camp Freddy. This is the comedian Freddy. This is uh, mainstream Freddy. That had dolls and Nintendo games and board games and candy and even a doll you could sleep with and shit, which is weird. But um, yeah, at this time, Freddy was no longer scary. It was just pure entertainment. When you watch those first two movies, you're like, eh, this shit's kind of creepy. And then by three, three was the beginning of Freddy's not so scary anymore. So Fred, so scariness goes out the window. Freddy right now is completely camp, all right? And uh, I'm going to get to Darnell's thoughts in a second. But yeah, back then, eight-year-old me loved Elm Street 4. 42 year old me i still love this movie for nostalgic reasons doesn't quite hold up like the like like one and three does to me now this is just me now okay don't crucify me but just to me doesn't quite hold up like one and three but it is still a fun time uh it's actually some slow moments you know there's times where it kind of lost you a little bit because i watched it with my daughter and she said it was it kind of got boring until it got to the part where your girl debbie got turned into a roach so, I'm not going to be rude, y'all, real quick. I'm going to give the floor to Darnell. Darnell, what did you think about Elm Street 4, The Dream Master? What's good, big bro? Thank you again for letting me collab on your channel for another Nightmare on, Street video, Nightmare on Elm Street video. See how fast I be talking? So I got to slow it down sometimes. So, I be just like, yes. Thank you for having me again on this video. And we're talking about Nightmare on Elm Street 4 this time, The Dream Master. Yeah. Now, this one, I know, like, the back of my hand. What? What the fuck is that? I know this movie so much. This is this is like my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie. So Big Brother, thank you for letting me get on this video with you. Fuck, this is it. Yeah, it's a movie we just been collaborating and talking about back and forth, just quoting back and forth in our inboxes. No, it ain't gay. It's two grown men inboxing each other back and forth movie quotes. There's nothing homosexual about that at all. That's just two passionate men talking about movies. It ain't gay. Pretty much this movie again. It's just Freddy comes back. And now he's going after not only the old Elm Street kids from Nightmare on Elm Street 3, but now he's trying to get the new Elm Street kids from Nightmare on Elm Street 4 in this movie. Elm Street is a long street. Oh my God, it's so much like a movie. First of all, the, when the movie opens up, it plays that song. I I can't play it because, you know, copyright laws and shit. It's, it's weak. But I can, like, I'll try to sing it. My singing is horrible, but here we go. Gotta run, gotta hide, running from this nightmare. You know how it goes. It's on HBO Max. That's the, that's the song, that's the shit. Anyway, there's so much like what's movie, pretty much Freddy comes back because it, it, it's, what's funny is the dog, is the dog's name is Jason and he pisses Freddy back to life. 
he's back. Don't question it. This movie came out in the 90s, so don't question it. It's just Freddy's back. And he's just, you know, doing his shit again. Like this time, this movie looks a lot more cleaner than Nightmare on Elm Street 3 for some reason. I don't know if it was the cameras they used or the sets, but this movie looks so much more cleaner. I love it. I just felt like Elm Street 3 had that, like, some type of, like, grit, grainy feel to it. I don't know. But Elm Street 4 just looks so much cleaner. Chris, I, I don't know what it is. And the kills in movie 2 are even better than Nightmare on Elm Street 3. I gotta say, I love 3. Don't get me wrong. If he had the kill in the junkyard, I love that. And then the one with the waterbed, he's all like, how's this for a wet dream? My favorite quote from this movie is when him and Alyssa are in the dream world, but she's like at this diner or whatever, because she gets sucked through the, uh, she's, she's in a dream, a dream within a dream. She gets sucked from the movie theater into the screen. And it's her older self with a pizza shit. Pretty just nonchalantly comes in her frame. He's all like, if the food don't kill you, the service will. Mm. I love this movie so much. I think the most disturbing dream sequence in this movie for me has got to be the roach one. It, it, it's, oh my God. It's so gross, so nasty. Like she, the girl, she's in the dream world because she like hates bugs and shit. You think she's in this room or whatever. She falls on the floor, but it's actually a, a roach motel. So the sticky shit is like peeling her face off. And it's just gross and bugs and shit. Gut. If you hate bugs, and roaches this scene might make you be like yeah turn this movie off now i love that shit he's just like you can check in but you can't check out and he just crushes it i love freddy in this movie as you can tell i'm so, so passionate about this i love this movie and in the day nightmare on street 4 i love this movie so much i had a great time with it matter of fact i might just watch it again because it's a movie that i could just put on at any time and be like this is this is still good thank you for shop big bro for letting me do a collab with you again on nightmare on street 4 because this is the shit this is my shit yes what's your favorite nightmare on street movie comment below let us know let's talk about it and i will see you guys in the next video subscribe to my channel subscribe to rashad g's channel just subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video like i said as always subscribe until next time yeah um Okay, this your favorite one of this series? Uh, you know what? Yeah, well, to me, it ain't the worst one. You know, I wouldn't say it's the best, but it's not the worst one. So I forgot to get into the whole plot and everything. So Elm Street 4 picks up after Dream Warriors. So the survivors are Kristen, Joey, and Kincaid. They defeated Freddy, and now they're trying to live regular lives. But there's a little difference now is that <laughs> Kristen is now played by Tuesday Night instead of um, Patricia Arquette. Okay, so we got Tuesday Night here. So that kind of throws it off a little bit because... Patricia Arquette was so great as Kristen in, in 3, and now we have Tuesday Night, who also sung the, the intro song. I'm like, oh, okay. But, okay, off rip, first thing I didn't like about Dream Master is they took my favorite character from the third movie that, that survived. The brother that survived the third movie, and he's the first motherfucker to go in the fourth movie. That's strike one, goddammit. That's almost on the level of Apollo Creed getting killed in Rocky IV, almost on that level. I was like, come on, man. Kincaid, like, he went through a lot to survive that third movie. And he the first one to go with his, so, but, you know, you know, all three of them got taken out, so all the Dream Warriors are gone now, I guess they have to make room for the new characters, so yeah, Kincaid goes first, then Joey, then Kristen, now we have these new characters, led by Alice, who has a uh, dream ability to, what's her ability, okay, Kristen can bring people into her dreams, and which Alice does take that power, so I guess Alice is almost like the dream version of Rogue, where she can take other people's dream powers and shit. So every time somebody dies, she absorbs their powers. Like Rogue from X-Men. And um, what was her original dream power? I don't think Alice really had one. Alice was just a daydreamer. She was a daydreamer, I think. Yeah, she was a daydreamer. And, but she, okay, so she adopted Kristen's power. And then she adopted, well, Joey and Kincaid really had no power. I guess Kincaid was strong. So she took that one. But anyways, everybody that got killed, she took their power. Even her brother who was, I guess, kind of like a kung fu master. And that was probably the worst Freddy death out of all of them was him because Freddy wasn't even there. You didn't even see him. You just saw the glove. But I think there's a story behind that, why they couldn't, um, I guess they didn't have the, the money, the budget to create uh, an elaborate dream sequence. So they just made that up on the fly. I guess it's still kind of worked, but to me, that's one of the worst kills. But this movie also had probably one of the best kills. And that's when Debbie got turned into a roach. Now, at the time, this is 88, at the time, Noom Effects was crazy, son, and they still hold up to this day, like, a lot of practical effects still hold up, and that's one of them, and that's one thing you can never take away from the Elm Street movies, is that the effects are always top fucking notch, the effects, crazy, even the way Freddy died, I think Freddy even had the best death in this one, so yeah, I mean, you, t you have the, the best Freddy, one of the best Freddy kills, the best Freddy death, when all the bodies, was like, his children were coming out of him and shit, that, that was a crazy effect, 
And you could also watch it on YouTube. The making of that, like the work that went into that was fucking crazy. So Rennie Harlan directed this. And Rennie Harlan also directed movies like Cliffhanger, uh, Deep Blue Sea, um, Die Hard 2, I believe he directed. So yeah, Rennie Harlan, he's been the, in the game for a minute. And uh, I think this was his first feature that he directed. But now I heard a little story about the girl who played Sheila. Now, Rennie Harlan denies this, but I was watching, uh, what's that documentary, Never Sleep Again? And the actress that played Sheila said that um, when she was playing her scenes, Rennie Harlan said she wasn't acting black enough. Right, if you remember Sheila, yeah, Sheila was like nerdy, but she was smart. You know, she wasn't the the stereotypical black chick, the black person that you've seen in a lot of those movies. She was actually a, a smart girl. And Rennie Harlan said, okay, this is not working. You know, you, you're not being black enough. And she said she had to G-check him like, if you don't set your ass down somewhere and not turn me into a fucking st uh, stereotype, you know what I'm saying? Chill. All right. So, yeah, a little, little tribute for you there. Probably my favorite scene is when Alice uh, met up with Freddie at the church and she was kicking the shit out of him. And Freddie just laughing hysterically the whole time at her. I don't know. There's something hilarious about that. I mean, she thought she was doing something, but you can't hurt Freddie in the dream world until you get ready to kill him. But other than that, just like trying to hurt him or like fight him, that's not going to happen. We're talking the bastard son of a hundred maniacs. He's crazy. You know, you can kick him in the balls. He'll, he'll hurt, but he'll laugh about it. You know, a bad move, Alice. So yeah, wrapping up, y'all, not to go on and on. Nightmare on Elm Street 4, the Dream Master, gets a B- in my book. Um, I, you know what? Well, I'm going to wait till after I review all of them to rank all the Elm Street movies. But this is up there with one of the, you know, one of the top ones. You know what I'm saying? But it definitely does a top one and three. But it is entertaining as shit. And that's it and that's all. Darnell, thank you, my man, for joining me in this video. And uh, maybe we can collab again for Freddy's Dead or New Nightmare. Maybe one more Freddy movie. You know what I mean? Make sure you subscribe to Reject the Heroes Media. Link is in the description once again. If you like and dig this content, hit that like and subscribe notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video. Thank you.